My boss just emailed me. Now he's sending me a message marked as urgent and important. And he's texting me now. What? Now he's calling me. This is, this is not doable. Forget it. I quit. I can't do this. In the world of remote work, boundaries are not just helpful. They are essential. I remember a prior job where my boss was very, very aggressive in the way that he would constantly be demanding a response as soon as possible. Being that he would send you an email, you would need to be responding to it within 15 minutes. He would mark a lot of messages as important and he would be constantly sending me messages to the point where I always felt, okay, this is getting a little stressful. I would always be trying to keep on top of it, which I think ultimately fed into the system. And it just spiraled out of control over time to the point where it started going after work hours, it started going to the evenings, it started going into the weekends, and then it started becoming text messages, then it started becoming calls, and then I was burning out and I needed to take a sick day off just to turn it off. And I was even getting called on my sick days because of burnout. And I really, really dug a hole for myself. I could only blame myself, but why? First of all comes the mindset of mental health. When you are feeling down, it's important to recognize it is easy to blame all of your problems on other people or things and feel helpless. You become what I call a victim, a part of the victim mindset. And when you have this mindset, it becomes a spiral and you feel like you can do nothing about it. So instead, changing the mindset and overcoming that to become something more is a part of the process of keeping that wellness and healthy mindset and mental health. I can easily blame my boss in this circumstance and say it's all their fault. But the real challenge would be, what did I do to allow this to happen? Analyze that because that, that is something I can improve in the future. And that is something I can do something about. And one of the hardest spots, especially with negative mental health, is getting to the point where you feel helpless. And that is a bad place to be. But when you at least have a ladder to climb out of that hole, then you have a path forward. Ultimately, with the experience where I did experience burnout because my employer was messaging me all the time after hours on weekends to the point where I was still being called even on my sick days, I couldn't take it anymore and I needed to get out of it. Because at the time, I didn't have the skill level or the bonds needed to work with the individuals, I needed to exit the work environment and do something for myself and improve my own mental health because I was in a very bad place when that was happening. Looking for a new job and leaving that was one of the best decisions I can do for myself. And with my new employer, I set the boundaries right off the bat because I was learning from my mistakes prior. I analyzed what could I have done better? What did I do wrong? And I tried to improve the situation with my new employer trying to set those boundaries right off the bat. Instead of working after hours, I would make sure I, I would not communicate anything after hours. I wouldn't allow that to creep in. And I would always make sure I was communicative to my team and manager in trying to tell them that messaging after hours stresses people out and I won't do it and I expect the same of you. And so that we all can respect each other in our work time boundaries. So ultimately working to define good start and end times with myself and my colleagues allowed me to establish a much more healthy work environment and improve the situation I was in. And I put the onus on myself to make sure I can actively communicate my needs with my team in order to ensure that doesn't happen again. Because going back, you cannot count on being able to change other people, but you can try and try to change with yourself and try and see what actions you can do to manipulate things around you, to change things around you. But don't count on stress can be sneaky but it leaves clues if you know where to look. It's easy to get into a slippery slope of working hard and then suddenly weeks and months pass by 
and all you can look back on is the amount of work you put in. You become so passionate about that thing that nothing else matters. You put in the hours, you put in the time, and now you become super stressed when anything goes wrong. You've been led to a imbalance of that work and life. And now that work is your life and you become super hypersensitive to the point where when things are going wrong and out of your control, they impact your mental health in significant ways that you no longer have control of. Believe me when I say I've been there several times in my life and trying to have the proper controls to make sure I mitigate them. Mitigate it early and frequently is important because the downhill slope of it becomes much more aggressive the further you progress and the deeper of the cut it can make in you as you continue to spiral more and more downhill. And believe me when I say, work is always important to me. By saying I, you need work and life balance does not mean work is not important. It's just limiting its ability to control you and drive you down into that spiral by ensuring that you have other things in your life, other things to balance you out. Even when work doesn't go well, you will pull through and it limits its damage to your mental health. Because let's be honest, when you're working for a business, you are a piece of the value that the business needs. And if the business doesn't find the value you provide valuable as it was yesterday or they're not making as much money you are not a family member you're an employee and sometimes that means you may not have a job and as hard as that is to think you have to think that way i always urge do the best you can but never be so deep into it that you believe that your job is your life It's important to realize that stress is not a sign of weakness. You have to check with yourself regularly, see what your level of stress is, and back off. If you need to, take some time off of work and intermix other things into your life to add some balance back into your work and life balance. That work and life balance is necessary to keep a good mind state. And realize when you're getting too passionate about something, no matter how much you want it to succeed, sometimes that can lead to burnout. When you don't have anything else to balance out and that becomes the one thing that you care about and the only thing you're really focusing on and you're driving it to no end, you can start burning out because you don't have full control over the situation. And that lack of control and the amount of passion that you have can lead to feeling of disappointment, emptiness, and even anger all sorts of emotions that can really start spiraling your mental health downhill. And I do want to know that I am not a licensed psychologist and I'm not trying to substitute in any way for proper medical treatment. However, I have been through a lot of stress and I've been through a lot of hardships in my life and I have learned a thing or two and I'm trying to share my experiences with you so you can take away and hopefully get something out of it and improve your ability to work remote and be that digital nomad and avoid these deadly spirals that lead to poor mental health and burnout. Remote work doesn't mean working in isolation. You have to cultivate connections on and off screen. Let's talk about maintaining a social life. Now this is personally a hard one for me. I've always wanted strong social connections. Through my childhood, I moved around a lot and I made some good friends, but then I would move. And so over the years, I have a lot of decent friends, but no great friends that have been there through my entire childhood or through my younger years or even into my adult life. I have great connections and I love every single person I've met and I appreciate every single person I've met. But with the amount I work, the amount I travel, the exercise, the amount of hobbies I do, and all the various other activities, it's really hard to build these strong connections. Luckily, I have my wife, which is really my best friend. We've been through a lot of ups and downs in life together.
that has hardened our relationship and that has ultimately been a very strong pillar for me to lean on especially now with it that doesn't mean that i don't want more social connection it's really a matter of trying to juggle all the different hats i wear and the time that i have that's the limiting factor and you may feel the same but if you are in a place and i've definitely been there where you don't have anyone else to talk to i will say it is worth trying to invest time into building stronger social connection and you can do so by picking up some hobbies outside of work whether it be video games watching movies knitting motorcycles flying planes scuba diving hiking there's just endless amounts of activities that people are interested in and you can explore things like meetup.com or just search for local groups in your area on Facebook, you name it, but you can probably find some group that is local to you and shares your interests and you can start building strong, genuine connections with other people through shared interests. And this ultimately just makes it easier to connect with other people and build a strong, balanced social life because I want to caution you not to just treat work as the only place to have social connections. And it's very important to build social connections at work. But if it's the only place you have social connections, what if you change jobs? What if they lay you off? What if you get forced to move teams? There are a lot of things that are not necessarily in your control. And if all your social connections are there, it can leave you at disadvantage and a strong feeling of loneliness afterwards. And of course, employers today, they are not incentivized to really care about you as a person. They look at you as human resource. You are nothing more than a resource to your employer. As long as you're being resourceful and you're providing resources to your employer, they will continue to employ you. Hopefully, unless the thing that you're working on is no longer resourceful. But with that said, you don't want all your social connections in one basket. The saying goes, don't put all your eggs into one basket. Don't put all your social connections into your job. On that same vein, remote work doesn't mean working alone. Cultivate working relationships between you and your colleagues for camaraderie and collaboration. To this day, the best jobs I've had are not because of some sexy project or technology I got to work on or thing I got to experience during the job or even the pay. It's always the people and the connections I built on the job. And you will be doing yourself a disservice if you just treat work as a place they don't want social connection. Trust me, it is very important to build those social connections with others and have genuine relationships. I know this sounds like I'm back treading over what I just said in the prior section. It's also important to have a social life at work for the reasons that it makes your job easier. If you have trust and relationships with the people you work with, you become more valuable to your employer and the people you work with, and you'll be able to achieve more at a higher velocity by building a team relationship. And if you build friendships at work, it's even better. I've built lasting relationships with a number of colleagues. And even after I moved jobs, I've kept in touch with them through the years. And they are some of my best relationships even today. So make sure you build those connections and don't treat people like a robot or a automaton. They are real people. And they are probably, especially if your coworkers are remote too, could also be feeling lonely like you. So try to get to know your coworkers, get to know their family, get to know their hobbies, get to know their situation, get to know anything and everything that you're willing to talk about and check in with them from time to time. Let them know you care about not just their contributions to their work, but to as them as individuals. Because usually when people start realizing that someone's genuinely interested in them, they start seeing them as a human and as a human to human relationship. And that opens a lot of doors to some healthy and working relationships that can be a really good pillar, especially if you have times of need, be it the thing that you're struggling with at work or someone you need to confide in when you're having a hard time with some stress. Move your body and feed your mind. Exercise isn't just for physical health. It's a mental game changer. Don't know what it is. But in the past, when I've started burning out, it's usually because I've been working long hours and I noticed one thing with myself, I tend to stop working out as much as I should. And I think it's because 
I want to deprioritize spending time on other things. And I start being too passionate about the thing I'm working on. I really want to succeed and everything else just gets sidelined. It's taking time and I don't need to spend it that time. I need to focus on the thing I am working on. And that is a very slippery slope, let me tell you. So with that said, it's important to balance exercise and fitness and diet and sleep into your schedule. In general, health. You need to think about your health. Don't think as work as a zero-sum game that should be taking all of your time, especially when it's getting stressful. It's good to just take a break from that work. You hit the boundaries that you set for work and it's time to start on your time, your personal time. And some of that personal time should be going into maintaining your health, be it you need a proper amount of sleep for yourself, you need to be eating healthy. Don't be resorting to fast food diets or junk food and try to have a good balance to what you eat and maintaining a good amount of fitness, being weightlifting and aerobic exercises. And another easy thing to help is just avoid sitting too long. Right here, it's a standing desk and I will often stand most of my work days. In general, it's just a better posture to stand and it makes me move around a little bit. And I also have a walking pad that I'll just walk slowly on when I'm at the computer. And this helps give me a little bit of workout. It's not much, but it's something and it keeps me moving. So just trying to avoid sitting too long also helps a lot with your general physical well-being and further your mental health. Because your mental health is based off of your total well-being in a lot of ways. Your workspace sets the mindset for success. Clean up your surroundings and watch your mindset follow suit. And another thing that can be affecting you and your mental health is if you're working in a dark environment or a place that's cluttered, these things can be small little things that maybe don't consciously think about, but subconsciously they have effect on your mind and over time and start taking you down that spiral to a place where you don't want to be. One important thing that I found, and maybe it's a smaller thing in comparison to the other things I've mentioned in this video, is that over time, if I'm focused on just work, my environment might start getting cluttered. And especially if I'm traveling, I might not pay attention to the small things like proper lighting. And all these small things can play a subtle effect on my mind and start getting to me to the point where I subconsciously start going downhill. Even though I don't consciously think about these things, I start feeling more stressed, I, being that my chair is uncomfortable. There's a small agitating sound that I can't put my finger on, but it just annoys me. Or it's too cold or it's too hot. My place is too cluttered or it's too dark. And all these things just slowly eat at my mind state until I get agitated and maybe I snap or I break down or I just find that I can't take this anymore. And so taking a moment to just take a step back look at your environment and ask yourself, is this a healthy work environment? Can I do something to update it? Is there something I can do to improve this area? It's a small thing when you think about it in the grand scheme, but it can do so much for you when you do it. And just acknowledging that and fixing those small things can play a huge role into continuously improving the mindset and my mental health. Silence is golden. Create a tranquil workspace for enhanced concentration and productivity. Focus is something that I've always tried to improve on and I believe trying to maintain strong focus is not so much something you're inherently born with but something you train as a skill. And so if you haven't trained it, I highly recommend a video for you that I'll link above. But even starting out, when I started working remote and as a digital nomad, Sometimes you find yourself in noisy situations and that can really lead to unyielding frustration. I remember one time where we didn't have great internet at a hotel and I needed to go find a coffee shop to work at. And this coffee shop just was super noisy and I was not prepared at all with headphones or anything. So I really tested my ability to focus, but ultimately it really tried my patience and this became a super unhealthy work environment and only added to my stress levels. And the stress levels were probably skyrocketing that day 
especially with the amount of responsibilities and the work I needed to provide. All that keeps going. They don't care about your work environment. It's on you to figure out. With that, I've always made it a habit to plan where we're going to be staying. Make sure they have good internet. Check with the office, check the reviews, ensure we have contingencies. In the worst case, I'll make sure I can bring a headphone that can cancel noise. And ideally, I'll try and find a quieter place than a coffee shop. Sometimes it can be an interesting challenge to go to these places and see how well you can do, how well you can maintain your focus. But I have to say that these are challenges. And if your bar is not there and you can't maintain your focus, then it becomes just frustrations and things that are against you and those will add to your stress. So if you're already stressed about other things, you don't want this to be adding to the pile, which will only create a harder and more negative work environment for you. So if you do the proper research and make sure that you're securing a work environment and building all your travel plans around it, then it just makes the problem so much easier and stress-free. The less stress you can cause for yourself, because work is going to be stressful no matter what, and the less stress you can bring yourself while you're traveling and working, the better. One thing to note is work is always going to be a little bit stressful. The way corporations work today is by constantly trying to improve what they did last year and trying to continuously improve. They've embraced a growth mindset to a literal degree. And the only way to grow is to break some comfort zones. That stress is going to be inherent, and that's why you have to introduce things in your life to balance that out. And with your travel and being a digital nomad, that's only going to make it a little bit harder. So by embracing that growth mindset and that challenge mindset and balancing other things in life to make sure that stress doesn't drive you into the ground is critical. And by the way, if you're into pushing boundaries and you are excited to embrace that challenge mindset that I discussed in this video several times, then I have a perfect video for you to watch next. Check it out up here.